Hey, it's Dave Brown here, host of Now with Dave Brown on AMI. Check out this latest highlight from the show. It's cottage season, if you're lucky enough to have cottage friends. It's also the start of preparation for summer camps, including CNIB's Lake Joe. Emily Shavers is back on the lake as she prepares for a busy summer ahead. Emily is also the founder of True Faces. Hey, good morning, Emily. How are you today? Good morning. I am good. It is sunny and already 15 degrees up here in Muskoka. Yeah, it uh, got into the 20s yesterday. Nice to be by the lake. Even if the water's still a little cold, those 20 degree days go a long way. How are things going up at the lake so far? Well, we started it a little bit rougher, especially with a lot of rain and flooding on site the first week that I was oh, here. But we have surely dried up and the sun is shining, which is great. Um, and all of our spring staff are now on site, which is wild to me because I'm like, oh my goodness, we've already done like almost two weeks of training with them. Emily, you have a long standing relationship with Lake Joe, both as someone who attended and someone who's worked there. Why do you keep coming back? You know, truly there is like no place on earth like CNIB Lake Joe. I would, I would compare it to Disney World's slogan of like, you know, happiest place on earth. Um, but even from the moment that I started attending camp in 2017, it's always just been a very magical place. Um, it was actually the first place where I met somebody with the same condition as me. Um, and I have still been connected to this family to this day and just getting to see how much this place changes the lives of people who are blind and partially sighted across Canada and just hearing all of the great memories that people have had over so many years is really just why I keep coming back. Mm. One of the really cool things is that Lake Joe has gone through an evolution. Every year it seems like there's a little something extra on offer for campers. What can campers expect this summer? Well, okay, in terms of new things, I think we've slowed down a little bit okay. this year with all okay. of the changes that have happened, <laughs> which is great because yeah. I feel like we need to just kind of ruminate on what we have right now. But uh, something that's really exciting this year is doing our water sports program with our youth this year. So last year we test piloted the program with our adults and it went really well. So we're planning on bringing it to our youth and providing them that opportunity to try water skiing and wakeboarding. Um, I think the only new addition we had to camp this year was a new scoreboard for I I've our five-a-side soccer pitch, uh, and we've actually got our soccer coaching program coming up uh, next weekend. So lots of exciting things in store. Um, in addition to what's already existing, we had the pizza oven up and oh, running yeah. this week, mm. um, and the canoes have already been in the water. Uh, Emily, the, in terms of the, the blind soccer pitch, I know that was something that you were really spearheading or part of last summer, so that's got to feel pretty cool with the pieces coming together more and more around that. It really is. I, you know, had the opportunity to train some of our spring staff on blind soccer. And, you know, it's so funny being that I've, I've never really played the sport, but I still get to have this great connection to it and getting to share it with um, our spring staff and, you know, having them say, oh my gosh, I never thought this would be possible for someone who was blind. Um, and seeing this sport kind of grow over the years, I even uh, was at a school um, two days ago on Tuesday and was teaching some high schoolers about blind soccer. And same thing, they were like, oh my goodness, I never thought this was possible um, that somebody who was blind would play soccer. Um, and just hearing how cool they thought it was. Um, I mean, that's also why I keep coming back to camp once again, but you know, seeing this sport kind of grow over time has been really, really cool. I have had a few opportunities to visit Lake Joe in my adult life. Uh, when I was a teenager, I did not know it was exist. I, I was I was a Quebecer. I didn't I didn't know anything about Lake Joe and how the Montreal Association for the Blind could get me out there linking up with the CNIB. But when I've had a chance to go in my adult life uh, from an AMI perspective, covering the camp, doing some stories about the camp, I just think spending time around a lake in the middle of summer. Mm -hmm. There's like nothing quite like it, but I am a softy, Emily. I've told you this before. I am a <laughs> soft individual. So I went in the end of July and even plunging into the lake Ooh. in the middle of July, I was like, this is a little chilly. 
How long before? You know what? You've got to get that prime August time where the <laughs> weather is starting to get a little bit cooler and it makes the lake feel a lot. Oh, yeah. I was going, to, but, the, but the question is, when are you going to take your first plunge or have you already <sighs> taken the plunge? You know, I watched a couple of our staff members jump in uh, a nearby lake, not even Lake Joe, because Lake Joe is one of the deepest and coldest Muskoka lakes. Um, we went to a nearby lake and they jumped in and just watching them, I was cold. So I don't know if I'm going to get in before like mid June, because even then, like, oh, it takes the breath right out of me when it's that cold. <laughs> I, I do like that, that uh, Kent Lake Joe has a couple rules, though. You can't just be a willy-nilly hopping into the water. Uh, they, they don't want a bunch yes. of folks from the blind and low vision community taking a rogue swims, which uh, makes some sense. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good policy. It's a good policy to have on the books. Uh, Emily, yeah. you're working up at the camp, and that's super fantastic, but you're also an entrepreneur. You're the founder, the co-founder of True Faces, and you wanted to take an opportunity to shout out a creative writing contest that True Faces has going on. Why did you and the gang want to start a creative writing contest? What are you looking for from folks? Yeah, so we decided to launch a creative writing contest because we've heard a lot about how um, people within our community like to share their voices. And we really have this storytelling focus on people sharing uh, what makes them unique, what makes them special um, and sharing their voice on our platform. And so we thought, why not add a little bit of a creative spin to this where people can get creative, whether that is through comics or poetry or storytelling, to talk about the experiences about living with disabilities um, in a creative and kind of highlighting sense where um, we can also give back to our community through some potential prizes and having their voice um, amplified on our page even more in a creative fashion. We heard a lot from our ambassadors that they really like to do a lot of creative writing um, so offering it out to our community was something that we really felt um, would be special to do. What are the prizes that are incentivizing the writing beyond just the good ethical reason for <laughs> folks to do this? But what are some of the prizes? What are the enticements? Um, well, besides having their piece published on our blog website, we're also uh, sending them a... Uh, prize gift gift package um, for specifically writing to help them feel inspired, uh, valued at around $65, as well as a $25 Indigo gift card to uh, maybe some some books, maybe some writing materials. Um, so overall valued at about $100 so that we can give back to our community and they can have a place to share their voice. Emily, I uh, recently just started working on my novel again. Uh, <gasps> I've written about 20,000 words in the last two weeks. Uh, I'm not going to share it with True Faces, I'm sorry. I don't think, I don't think it would necessarily be appropriate. But uh, if you were going to be entering the writing contest, what would you write about? You know what? I will say I am less of a writer and more of a reader. I look forward <laughs> to reading people's pieces, but what would I write about? You know, I think it can be really difficult to just kind of pick a topic when there's no kind of say or like direction to go in. Um, so with our creative writing contest, we actually implemented the theme of authentically you, um, whatever that may mean to our participants. Uh, for me, that means showcasing some sort of experience that I've had and displaying what the experiences of somebody who's visually impaired may encounter. So I feel like I could draft up some like uh, a children's book, you know, kind of with some some blind characters um, and talk about maybe uh, basing it off of an experience that I've had um, because I do like a little bit more of a simpler fashion. I'm not a great wordsmith in any way. <laughs> That's Emily Shavers coming to you from CNIB Lake Joe in the Muskoka. Emily's also the founder of True Faces. Do you want to dive into more conversations like this? Watch Now with Dave Brown weekdays at 9 a.m. Eastern on AMI TV or download the podcasts wherever you listen.